Want to create an artist statement that doesn't suck? Stick around and find out how. So let's just skip all the pretense. I think you know what an artist statement is. And we can get into this list of 10 do's and don'ts for writing artist statements that I've created. The first thing I want you to consider is what is the artwork and how are you going to convey that in your artist statement? I can't tell you how many times I've read an artist statement and I don't even know what the person is making. This could be in a gallery, this could be somebody applying to art school, whatever it is, they write an artist statement. It's about their hopes and their dreams and the intersections of all sorts of things, but it doesn't say what it is. So start off very clearly by saying what it is that you make. I make paintings. Okay, good. Now we have a frame of reference and we can proceed to what the paintings are about. So start off with simply stating what is the artwork. Is the artwork a film? Is the artwork a painting? Is the artwork a drawing? What is it? So the second thing is that a statement lacks a clear thesis as to what the art is about. Now you can go Google what a thesis is. It doesn't need to be some complex idea. We want the thesis to be extremely simple, okay? So with my paintings, my paintings are about bodies, biology, and technology, and the intersection between these two worlds. This is a common thing. A lot of people make art about this, okay? I'm not acting like I'm special. I'm not quoting Deleuze or anything like that. I'm just telling you the basics of what my art is about. So we want to first state what is the thing, then we go to what is it about, and we go to big umbrella ideas first. And by big umbrella, I mean large tent ideas that encompass a lot of things. Art and technology, bodies and technology, right? We think of these big ideas first and then we whittle away and if we're lucky enough, you know, somebody gets to the end of the paragraph of an artist statement, then we could uh, be more detailed later. So start off with very, very clear language and uh, because, you know, this is a piece of writing. A lot of people think that this is a, an exercise where they can just dig into their thoughts and, and spill it all onto the page. But the purpose of this, we should think about the purpose of an artist statement is to tell somebody more about the artist and their work and their practice. This is a paragraph, this isn't a book, okay? So we want to get this idea and this uh, information through very, very clearly. So number two, once again, don't have an unclear thesis and use very, very simple language when describing what your work is about. Number three is don't use qualifying language. You can go Google out qualifying language if you're not sure what it is, but they're terms that are like, I usually, I often. Don't use these types of words that are um, just qualifying in nature. So you want to be direct with your words. Get rid of the I usually, I sometimes, all this sort of things. Just say, I do, I collage, right? I sometimes collage. No, you don't need the sometimes. I make collages, right? Again, clear, concise, get rid of qualifying language. It's a writing issue. Number four is something I call referenced but not named. When you're writing about your work, sometimes people will reference something, but they won't name it or point to it in the work itself. So if you're trying to get through a big idea like the intersections of dreams and technology or something like this, point to that in the work itself. So the person reading it can read that sentence, then go look and be like, oh, okay, I get it now, right? So stop referencing things without naming where they are or pointing to where they are in your work. Number five is using self-depreciating language. So in your artist statement, this is not necessarily the place to be modest. It's also not the place where you wanna be seen as arrogant, but you wanna be, again, very direct and very clear with what you are doing and what you are creating and take your ego don't try to be modest and say I just sometimes make these collages and I'm really happy that you guys have taken a few minutes to look at them you know that tells me nothing about the work and it just tells me more about you and that you're kind of like oh I just made this and I put it up on the wall thanks you know don't be like that. Also, of course, don't be extremely arrogant, but be direct and don't be modest. 
Number six is repeating words and phrases. Don't repeat yourself in your statement. Don't repeat words more than once. I wouldn't even use synonyms for words uh, often throughout an artist's statement. Think of it as you having one shot and that sentence should have everything packed into it to convey what it is that you want to say. You don't need to restate the same thing three, four times. Number seven is don't be too abstract with your artist statement. And oftentimes we get artist statements that want to be experimental and they want to be very abstract and play with the entire idea of an artist statement. I've seen that work a couple times. In general, uh, most audiences, most people, readers that are going to be reading these things don't want to deal with this abstraction. They think of an artist statement as like a very utilitarian piece of a puzzle to connect the words to texts and ideas. So don't try to use abstract language. Don't try to be experimental in your artist statement. Number eight on the list is don't use passive verbs. Passive verbs, an example of this would be had been working with, right? You could say, I had been working with wood while at the workshop in Saint-Tropez or whatever, right? Just say, I worked with. Just get rid of all that extra nonsense. Get rid of passive verbs. If you don't know what they are, again, Google out passive verbs and look in your artist statement. Do you have them? If so, just get rid of them. Shortens that sentence down to, um, you know, something much more concise. Uh, a future example would be like, will be made to interact with, right? Will be made to interact with. That's like a lot of nonsense in the language. Again, we want to go back to being concise and clear. And you can just say will. It will interact with, right? Not will be made to. Just get rid of that nonsense. Number nine is not using any examples. And sometimes you're reading an artist statement and it feels like it's completely separate from the work itself. And there's a whole art in trying to uh, bring writing and objects together where they complement each other and actually help each other, right? So oftentimes we'll have an artist statement that does not point to anything in the work itself. It feels like it's completely disconnected from the work itself. This goes back to just stating what you're working with. Is this a painting or a sculpture or whatever? but have examples from the work bubble up into your writing as well. And number 10 involves metaphor. Metaphors can be great ways to explain complex ideas in a simplified fashion. If you're using a metaphor, make sure, again, this is, goes back to number nine, having examples in the work, but if you're going to use metaphor in your artist statement, make sure that it is something in the artwork that the person reading it can make a logical correlation to. So if you're using a metaphor about a frog, um, you know, <laughs> going through the water or something like this, make sure that we can see that same idea in the artwork itself. Cool, so those are my 10 do's and don'ts for how to write an artist statement that does not suck. Thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, check the link in the description below. You can check out my artwork and uh, learn more about me and my whole practice. So thanks for watching.